testing, testing, test, test, testing. Go to replays and view this replay. Okay, and here we are back again. I'm Quincy 0191. Going to be shoutcasting the second game of this complexity versus easy NASL show match. Uh, if you haven't seen game one yet, I will not spoil it for you. It is on my channel. The title should be quite obvious. Um, it was a very good game. I'm not sure I can recommend going to watch it, of course, because the quality enc I encoded it in and then the editing was kind of horrible and you can barely see what's going on, etc, etc. I f have fixed those problems now and this should look a whole lot better. Um, and the first game is viewable. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not maybe not something you want to spend an hour on. Um, that being said, it was a very good game. And here we are in game two. Um, bands are starting to come out, much like the last game, they are going very, very quickly. So far we have Silhouette, Wild Soul, Ophelia, Hellbringer, and Ra waiting on the sixth band here from Beat Is. Uh, but there it is, Jeraziah. So far, nothing crazy. Ophelia is a little interesting. Not too many players can play Ophelia very well, so her getting a ban here is kind of surprising. Uh, the only guy I know who's got a really great Ophelia is Ake on Online Kingdom. He plays an awesome Ophelia, just amazing the amount of micro he can do there. Uh, of course, Ake is not in this game because this is not an Online Kingdom game. Um, so I don't, I don't know if uh, Ophelia is a respect ban or if they don't want to deal with the micro or, or what it is. It looks like Toronto and Complexity banned him. I really don't know if anybody on Easy plays him well. I would guess Yoda if it's going to be somebody. Possibly Chu. Uh, Torture next ban also very common. Uh, Raw ban for the second game in a row, which shows you how powerful he was at this point. This is, again, this match played about six months ago, so. Um, he's, he did get a recent nerf, but even now he's he's quite strong, so that makes more sense. Hellbringer, obviously, because of the ultimate, it's one of those, probably the most most powerful ultimate of the game. Huge AOE, superior magic stun, and Malthus is of course an incredibly strong uh, summon. Last ban is Plague Rider, of course, extinguish gives you great lane control. Uh, so generally, not too much that's going on here. Uh, mostly uh, normal bans, except for that one. Ophelia is a little strange, but of course understandable. Nymphora. Moving to the picking stage here, you've seen Nymphora picked up. Um, she was a band in the first game, so I guess there was good reason for that, because she's first pick here. And uh, like we said before, that makes uh, a degree of sense. Her ultimate, the ability to travel uh, anywhere on the map with a bunch of heroes, gives you just such fantastic gank potential and uh, mobility. And of course, mobility is very, very much a part of this game. Uh, you, you, you'll often see you know, the fastest, most mobile heroes as quickly banned, and there you go right there, there's wild, two of them, Wild Soul and Silhouette. Um, not Repulsor though, actually Repulsor, very common ban, not banned in this game, so let's see if anybody picks him up. See Soft picking Magmus and Pharaoh here, Magmus. and they're going to pick up both of those heroes. Of course, two Pharaoh. very common heroes in the competitive scene, Pharaoh, largely unrivaled in terms of initiation. Um, with the ultimate, his ability to get in there and cut off one or two members of the opposing team with the mo w mummy wall and the hellfire, of course, dealing a lot of damage. Uh, Magmus, very strong semi-support hero, typically doesn't play the hard support role. He will help ward and, and he won't take farm and things, but he like to see a PK on him about 20-25 minutes, so he gets the extreme ability and he can use the ultimate to great effect. Before the PK, you don't really see a lot of great Magmus ultimates. There are some good ones, but nothing really uh, huge in team fights. Once he gets the P key, though, of course, he becomes a huge force in a team Tempest. fight. And there's uh, two Holy counters God. to that team fight presence in Tempest and Polywell Priest. Of course, Tempest, probably the strongest uh, team fight ultimate in the game. Where I said Hellbringer is the strongest ult in the game, but uh, Tempest's ability to lock down, uh, you know, a couple of heroes with the ultimate for three or four seconds and just let your carry beat on them. That's amazing. Of course, Polywog Priest, excellent CC, uh, and Chu, of course, strong Polywog Priest player, so taking that away from them is certainly a good idea. Those wards have excellent push potential. The tongue and the hex give you great CC, and if you can land those ward traps, which many of these competitive players can do, 
and you can basically insta-kill a support hero that doesn't have an escape. Uh, Magnus, of course, one of those heroes that does have an escape. But a uh, very powerful mid-hero in Polywalk Priest. Uh, Tempest expected to be jungling. Uh, Nymphora will probably be supporting somebody in a side lane, although, of course, we don't know who that is yet. Because uh, they have not made the last two picks. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. This time they're using all their time and giving me way too much to talk about because, as you may have noticed, they do not have a co-cast for this game. Um, but the last game they picked and banned everybody in about a quarter second, so we really didn't get enough time to go over those lineups. Uh, Keeper and Bubbles picked up here. Keeper not seen all that often in the competitive scene. He is a strong hero, a very, very strong jungler to counter that Tempest, who I still think is the strongest jungler in the game. Um, but, of course, very strong jungle hero. His, his big problem is he does not get um, automatic creep kills. You know, since he creates those uh, tree minions from trees and not from um, uh, neutral creeps like Tempest does, he doesn't get the automatic first creep kill, so he can be counter jungled by somebody like a Parasite or possibly even a Tempest who can come in there and as Keeper's about to kill a creep, just deny it with their own creep kill ability. And, and you do see that every so often. It's not super common, but it happens. Um, last two picks coming out here, Zephyr and Tundra. Zephyr, not again, not that common in um, competitive pawn. We did see him last game, but he's a very, very strong hero. Uh, excellent tank presence, excellent AoE team presence, lots of magic damage coming out from those uh, Typhoons and the ultimate. Uh, great anti-positioning ability in Gust, which deals with mini sun, so of course it stops teleports. And it will stop the Tempest ultimate as long as he does not have a shrunken head. Tundra, a great gank hero, put a portal key on him, and he can jump and ult somebody, lock him down for a long time. Of course, that shiver gives unrivaled vision. It's one of the huge key things in this competitive haunt is vision. That's why you see, you know, one hero dedicated to warding, even though they get no items, because, you know, having map control like that is possibly the most important thing to winning a game. Of course, playing well and, and having good heroes and picking good lineups is also very important, but if you can't see where the other heroes are, and if you uh, can't see you know, where it's safe to be or where it's unsafe to be, then you can get killed a lot, and good teams will take advantage of that. So, um, the Shiver are going to give them lots of potential there to uh, control the map, have vision, of course, it's basically like a no-cost movable ward. Uh, and the Coral, of course, too. Very strong slow. So Tundra, great pick. Pretty common in the competitive scene. Flask pick on uh, EZ is going to be that Flint Beastwood, giving them a hard carry. Uh, we didn't talk about Bubbles yet. Of course, great initiation. Uh, comes in there and silences and ults, and then you can't move, otherwise you get a fat stun. Uh, so between the Bubbles, Keeper, Magmus, and Flint, they have a pretty good amount of da AoE damage. Of course, Flint's ult, not what I'm talking about here, but it's Flare. Uh, but that is strongly countered by Zephyr, Tempest, and Polybo Priest. So there's a pretty good amount of team fight potential here on both teams. Uh, what I would expect going into the laning phase is that Tempest and Keeper of the Forest are going to jungle. And of course, the competitive pause. I do not have auto skip pause on, so let's just fast forward through this. And sorry about that, but I'm not. Not really, is it? The replay counter doesn't seem to be. Oh, whatever, there we go. Um, so more good things. I'm still learning now, it's my second cast. But uh, yeah, so Tempest and Keeper looks like they're going to be jungling. I would expect to see Bubbles in the middle. Uh, probably Flint in a solo lane. Or up there with Magnus. Yes, with Magnus. And Pharaoh in a solo lane. Okay, that makes plenty of sense. Pharaoh, very common solo laner, particularly in the suicide lane. He can snipe creeps and use the money, mummy walls to um, not die. Uh, very good block ability there. Looks like we're going to have Tundra up top in the solo lane. And um, Polywog in the middle. And of course, Tempest in the jungle. Looks like Nymphora and Zephyr bottom in this lane. And that's going to be a very easy lane to win for Zephyr. Because not only he's got the um, help from Nymph, and actually, it's like Betas might be in a little trouble, no. This is interesting, now Betas is playing the Pharaoh. Typically, he's a support player, typically a hard support player, and uh, Pharaoh's not really a hard support 
character. I guess you could play him like one, but he does need some items in order to be able to survive once he shops himself with somebody in the money malls. Like, you know, if he jumps that uh, Zephyr or something like that, then he's just gonna get taken out. Obviously, he's probably not gonna be planning on doing that, but it's it's a possibility. So. You typically see um, Magnus is more of a support hero, and Isaac Juton, aka Semi Jew, uh, is playing that. And Semi Jew is not really a support player; he's more of a mid player. And Yoda on Bubbles, more of a semi support player, and he's playing Bubbles. So this is very interesting, I guess, because it doesn't count. They're kind of experimenting with some new things. But for now, it looks like Zephyr's already taking control of this bottom lane. Vitas hasn't even seen a creep kill yet. He's got... oh, there's one. Um, and Magnus actually in top has not seen a creep kill yet either. But it looks like they might be trying to jump this tundra. No, he's just took it off the trees. Tundra, I guess, did with the axes. And so Flint's gonna have free farm top, and Zephyr is gonna have free farm on bottom with the help of their respective babysitters. And really, I expect Legion to win this, because Tundra doesn't need items so much. And Zephyr, I think, is going to beat Flint, because typically Flint has the advantage of turreting and sitting in the back of the fight. In this situation, though, you're going to have blinks on at least uh, Polyglot Priest and Tempest, and possibly on uh, Tundra as well, I would recommend it. Not to mention Nymphora's port. So Flint is not really going to be safe due to his range. He, and, and of course, if you get to him, he's incredibly squishy and goes down about half a second. And, and he's really not going to be able to kill the Zephyr, so... This, I think, is, is well played by Complexity. They're... I expect them to win this bottom lane, I expect them to lose the bottom lane, but... the top lane, but the, the bottom lane is going to give them more returns. Looks like there's action up here on Tundra as he comes out of Magma Stun, and Flint's pounding in auto-attack damage. Magma's doing some hero blocking. We've already seen the flare come out from Flint, though, and is there going to be a Bloodlust here? No! He pops the health pod in the last second. Nice play there from Jaw. Just able to get away. He's got Stout Shield there, probably helping out him out quite a bit. Uh, so attempted first blood up there, but it's not going to go down. Here in this middle lane, we got Polyloid Priest taking on Bubbles which is probably going to result in strong lane presence from Polly. We can only see that um, he's level 4 compared to Bubbles just hit level 4. But Polly is probably not going to be able to kill Bubbles. Because Bubbles has take cover and shell surf, he's not going to be able to get ward trapped. And uh, with the silence, he can possibly prevent some of that hex from, from coming out. So I don't think Polly can kill Bubbles, but I think Polly can harass Bubbles out of lane enough, and Bubbles is certainly not going to be able to kill Polly, unless Polly grossly misplays. Uh, looking at some of the creep stats here, we've got Tempest in jungle, of course, 21 and 0 on the creep kills. That's a large result of him uh, denying, or uh, taking so much free farm. Uh, Zephyr is at 20 and 10 down here. He's just had absolute free farm. It's and 2011 now. Uh, over on the Hellborn side, we got Keeper. Of course, the other jungler not doing quite as well as Tempest, of course, because he does not have the ability to die that creep instantly in spawning his minions. And 18 and 17 up here on the Splint. So he's doing a really great job, not only of getting last hits, but denies as well, and trying to prevent as much experience from Tundra as possible. And you can see that yeah, Tundra's only level 2. And Magnus is also level 2, and he's gotten no creep kills, and he's been in the jungle half the time. So that just shows you how far back Tundra is. And here comes the Shiver, looking to scout. Some good creep stacking going on up here, of course. Presumably it's Magnus that's doing that. And actually, that could be a problem for Keeper, because his, his uh, minions are reasonably strong. And it looks like there's going to be jump here, hero blocking coming out, and it's not going to happen. Flint is a little too far away. Um, but that could be a stacking here. Is good later game, and possibly it's for Flint, not Keeper, but uh, Keeper's minions aren't super strong, and that kind of uh, creep stacking could lead them to get to getting killed very quickly, and of course that's not going to help him jungle at all. So um, maybe that's just for later, and I would imagine that's the case, but at least for now, uh, that's not going to help Keeper too much. Of course he has been confined to these main camps, so he's not really probably hurting that badly. Generally, though, not always not too much going on, about five minutes in now, and we still do not have a Bloodlust kill. Uh, most of these lanes are very, very passive. 
course, you got the two freeformers on top and bottom, and the other two opposing heroes suiciding that lane, trying not to die, and doing a good job of it by now. <laughs> um, looks like Pharaoh's gonna leave as an Infora comes in looking for him, and that's just gonna keep him out of the lane. The top lane is pushed up to the tower now, and that could be a bit of a problem for the Palborn team, because Tundra is going to be able to be a little more brazen now with this t with the tower defense there. Obviously, even though Flint's level 5 and Magnus is level 3 and Tundra is also level 3, they're not going to be able to die with tower. Flint's just too squishy, and Tundra's got too much health for them to take him out for them to take him out quickly enough. Um, but this is going to give Tundra some farm, and that's obviously not what the uh, Hellborn team wanted. It does not look like there's a ward up here in the uh, pull, so I don't know why that's not being pulled. I guess Keeper's just taking the farm. And really, that's not what they should be doing. They should be pulling that camp, or at least doing a better job of forcing Tundra out of lane. He's really not taking much damage. Meanwhile, Polly's getting jumped here, and he's going to be able to turn this around. First oh, yes, he is. Excellent Too double tap easy. there from Pain of Gold on Polylog Priest, actually trapping himself with the wards so that... Um, Sorry, Magnus on, uh, so I shoot on Magnus could not hit him, and tongue-tied uh, bubbles so that he couldn't hit him. And despite the steam bath from Magnus, I guess, just wasn't hitting him, wasn't doing enough damage, and the uh, helpful axes coming out from Tundra took, took down bubbles with assistance from Polly, and then the wards take out Magnus. And that, that was very well played there from, from Panicold on Polywalk because that looked like a very bad situation, and he certainly made the best of it. Uh, so now that double tap, of course, is going to help him come out. Looks like Keeper's going to come top and help push this tower with his minions. Of course, there's a lot of pushing potential coming out because of those. And he's already got a ring of sorcery. Ultimate coming out on Tundra, just going to scare him off, not going to kill him. And I think this tower will probably go down, or at least get close. Nope, it's dead. Flint probably still has his flare, and there's enough grip support right now to kill it. And there's more tree minions coming out. The Keeper taking some damage, and there's the flare that kills it. Actually, Chu getting credit for the kill there, not uh, not Flint. Korok on Flint. And there's some counter pushing coming out from the bottom, but not enough actual tower damage. Oh, there's Zephyr's gonna pop his ult, and a good, nice gust in there. Excellent stun from Tempora, and they're down. There goes Vita's on uh, Pharaoh, so maybe they will take this tower now that they don't have to worry about Pharaoh. And it's gonna go down a lot slower, of course, because they don't have any minion support. Tempest could do well to come in here, but it looks like they'll have enough damage to at least get close. The 30, the 8-minute creeps are quite far away, and they got their second wave coming in here from their legion. And it looks like this tower is certainly going to go down. The question is, is it going to be denied? And yeah, it looks like it's going to be because there's too much nice stun coming out from Nifor on nearly killing Chu on Kiever. But enough defense there to deny the tower on Hellborn. So nice play there from them. Cost them a couple of ports and nearly cost them Kiever's life, but tower deny also always very good. So actually coming out in middle. Tempest is invisible here. He's going to look to pop an ult soon. Polywog wards are up. So if he can grab both of those in an ult, then it's certainly the case that... Um, there it is, right there, and Polly's going to drop the wards now, probably on... Excellent double tap. Very, very nice play from... Uh, you know, he's playing Zaku on Tempest. Of course, it wasn't super hard. They didn't know Tempest was invisible, so popping the ult, not an issue, but good heads up play there. We're sure we're going to provide some vision. Minions coming out from Tempest, and this middle tower is going to go down. It does not look like this one will be denied unless there's some good play here. The yep, there it is. Keeper ult pop there for no reason. Kit nobody. Bubbles ultimate hit both of them, but Tempest is going to get away. Polylog's going to die here, but he might take Pharaoh with him. And there it is, the kill. So that was a very good trade. Pharaoh for uh, Polyglot Priest and a tower. Excellent decision there. And, roll, and now here comes the stun and stuff and shells from bubbles, and that's why it's hard to kill bubbles. You need a little bit more lockdown than that. Of course, if anybody gets a sheep sick on this team, then I might see a little more. My guesses would be Tempest or Zephyr. Possibly Tundra, but that's less likely. His farm is kind of horrible. 
sitting at only 164 GPM compared to Zephyr's 414 and Tempest's 302. So let's look at the GPM chart right now, of course. Uh, Zephyr way on top of that. Not surprising, he's an excellent farmer and he had a free farm on bottom. And it looks like here they're going to try to jump Flint. Invisibility again on Tempest, so he's going to be able to pop the stun. And there's the stun. Z Z Gus going to come out from Zephyr. There it is. There's the missed from Nymphora, and that's going to cost them a kill. That's too bad. Nice attempt there on Flint. If Nymphora had been able to hit her stun, then Flint would have gone down, but really not a easy stun to hit. Of course, the competitive level you expect it to be hit all the time, but... But in that situation, didn't get it. And really, the tree dog's coming out here. Keeper of the Forest is going to get hexed and tongue tripped, and he's going to go down, and then is going to go down to return. But Flint's now in trouble. Oh, nice. Ultimate coming out from Pharaoh, but it looks like it might have canceled Flint's port, and that's going to kill him with the trees getting sliced by Tundra, as well as the type. Uh, Cyclone's coming out from Zephyr doing a lot of damage. Zephyr doesn't even really have to attack you, just stand near you when you go down. So, not a great exchange on Hellborn's part. They lose Keeper and Flint, and in return only get Nymphora. And that is a terrible trade. Hard support for your carry and your uh, jungle farmer is not a good idea. And Zephyr's up to 423 gold per minute now. Just behind him is on Hollywog is 400, and the next one in the game is Chu on 327 gold per minute. So right now, there's an appropriately a 5,000 gold lead and a 4,500 gold uh, experience lead for the Legion team, and they've really been playing this well. They've taken two towers already, as opposed to the one from Hellborn. And they're looking like they're certainly in control of this game, and they really need to be, because they cannot let this one go to late game. Flint will outcarry everybody on um, the Legion team if they let him. And of course, there's a decent chance that they won't, because all they have to do is get in near him, and he'll go down very easily, and between Nymphora, Tempest, and Bollywog, they have a lot of ways to do that. And they have a lot of ways to prevent him from getting away between stuns on every hero except for Zephyr, who has Gust. Sorry, missed action down there. Looks like Bubbles went down. No, sorry, Tundra went down to Bubbles and uh, Pharaoh. Managed Bubbles' ult, but certainly didn't save him. And it's not He's hard to see why. Yes. Ward's coming out, taking out one guy, and Flint's going to go down here as well. Four on one. Totally screwed. So the Typhoon and Polywords coming out there, taking out uh, Magmus and Flint. And in a 4 on 2, that's not unexpected. Looking at items really quickly on Nymphora, nothing impressive. Boots and wards. Got a port and a pot for some luxury items. Uh, Zephyr picking up the helm, and I think she uh, just picked up the Shaman's headdress. Yep, there's the headdress for Zephyr. And Polywog, Storm Spirit, Strider's Power Supply Bottle, a lot of regen there. A good CC ability on Storm Spirit makes the Ward Trap a little easier to land, allows you to use your Hex a little more offensively, instead of just to set up the Ward Trap. Shiver getting taken out by the Tree Dogs there. Ah. Uh, Tundra there, only sit on Steam Boots and Man Battery and Stay Out Shield. Really his farm at the beginning was horrible because he was against Flint and Magnus in that top lane couldn't get anything. He's at 152 GPM, just about move 4 up. Um, Tempest is our guest portal key at 14 minutes, and that's quite a strong pickup. Uh, not too unexpected, his gold per minute is 292, and he, like I said before, he's an incredibly strong jungler. And he didn't really have to worry about ganks in the bottom lane because they were dominating Pharaoh so hard. Uh, on the Hellborn team, we've got Boots and uh, Port and Meyer Totem and Mana Battery on Pharaoh. Basically, very lucky, very much like Tundra, although a little worse because Zephyr did beat him better than uh, Flint and Magnus beat Tundra. Uh, Magnus is next up, looking at pretty much the same items as Pharaoh, except without Bottle. And that's kind of not good because, you know, Flint. Magnus has had no farm essentially except for tower kills. And he's looking at about the same GPM and uh, items as the 
the Pharaoh is, so that's not, not a good sign for Pharaoh. Of course, Beat is playing Pharaoh, probably not a hero he's typically used to. You don't really see him in a support role, and Beat is, is a support player. Um, keep the forest next course, the Hellborn Jungler, gonna ring the teacher for those tree minions to give them some extra armor, give himself some mana regen. Of course, keep his regen not super strong, and um, that helps out, as well as the Ring of Sorcery. Uh, give him some extra mana to keep spawning those minions, and Steam Boots are a, a typical pickup. Bubbles looking at a bottle of Steam Boots power supply. Had that mid farm, not great, only at 223 gold per minute against Polywood Priest 370. Of course, Polywood Priest has some kills, like at 7, 1, and 2, compared to Bubbles' 1, 2, and 1. So there's some backup there. On the other hand, the creep score, I'm sure, on Poly is much better. 61 and 6 against Bubbles is 47 and 14. So, you know, obviously uh, Polybog is winning every aspect of the gold farm there. And Flint, the carry hero for the Hellborn team, so you got a pair of duck boots, steam boots, power supply, and quick blade. And that's really kind of terrible for him, as is evidenced by his 245 GPM. He's been killed three times, and I'm really in kind of interesting spots. He died in the middle earlier um, to the Polywog and Zephyr ultimates, and there's really a question why he was there with no tower support. The Legion tower is still up, the Hellborn tower is not, and he only had Magnus, and they don't have a ton of vision. I can't speak to what they had uh, earlier, but if game one is on indication, there hasn't been that much warding going on. So that's kind of a precarious position for him to put himself in. It looks like there's going to be action up here as Pharaoh jumps in Flora, and that's going to lead to her death. Polywog Ward's coming out, and Flint is going to be safe for now. Bubbles and Zephyr going at it. Zephyr's going to obviously live, just way too powerful. It looks like everybody on the Legion team trying back. Keeper getting a place for an ult. Hits, just hits Polywog Priest and Zephyr. Excellent play. Hex coming up from Polywog to keep Keeper down, and both of the heroes are going to get away. It looks like it's just an image of Poly. They're wasting their time with. So they lose Nymphora and don't take anyone. Flint was in a little bit of trouble there, but obviously it's a good trade for the Hellburn team defending the tower and taking out somebody, even if it is just a support, and it's not a huge deal for the Legion team. Uh, but right now, obviously, there's a strong lead for, for Legion at a 6.5k and 5k, a golden and a 5k experience lead. They're certainly in control of this game, looking to push this top tower. Of course, Polywalk Wars are down, having been using the top last team fight. Uh, Shiver up here, giving vision. But they should be able to take this tower relatively soon. <laughs> Magnus taking some harassment, going down pretty quickly to those uh, axes from Tundra. So we got uh, two players grouped up here, looking to take this tower. It is fairly low, so it's likely to go down with this push. And the Hellborn don't look too interested in defending it. Their glyph is down, as they used to defend the tower earlier. And they just have no force coming in. And it's a tower. A Hellborn tower. New punch coming down here on the bottom with Zephyr and Nymphora. Zephyr gusting a creep wave to death. Uh, PK just picked up on levels. And they are not going to push this in as Pharaoh is up here to defend. Oh, maybe they are. Zephyr going to take some some damage in, and Hellborn do not have much around here to defend this course. There's a Legion Ward up here, so they have some ability to defend. Oh, excellent jump there from Pharaoh. Nice done, and Mungwells are trapped, and the Magnus Hall comes out, but he's actually stunned out of it. Well played by the Legion team there. Double tap coming out for uh, Zebuska on Zephyr, and Nymphora does get taken out by the bubbles, but that is a trade they will take, taking Magmus and Pharaoh, despite an excellent initiation from Pharaoh, and that's going to lead to this tower going down, and the middle tower actually went down with no uh, push. Polywog getting taken out on top, Tundra looks like he's next in line, and Tree managed to come out and block him a little bit. Bubbles has Shell Surf up in three seconds, and there's the taunt on the and there's the portal key, and there's the Shell Surf. Too easy. Gore taunt coming out there. So, there's a double tap on top, but countered by the one on bottom, and the Hellborn team did just go three for two, but, you know, they did, one of them was only Nymphora, and... I guess losing Magnus and Pharaoh, the two worst farmers in Hellborn, was a huge problem, but they lost two towers in the meantime. That's a little more important at this point, I think. Uh, Zephyr's farm now is shoved to 532 gold per minute. Just purchased his Mock of Brilliance. I was waiting for that one. And at 20 minutes into the game, 
a mock of brilliance is going to be incredibly deadly, particularly against all these squishy heroes in the Legion team. Neforoport coming in here, Tempest, and Zephyr chasing down this Pharaoh. It is Tempest, and there's the Hexken like, coming out from Polylog, and Pharaoh's going to go down. So no point in Magnus jumping in there because that would just kill him too. And excellent pick there. We got four men up here on the Legion side. They may look to push this in, or they may not. Looks like they're bagging off here with the pick on Pharaoh. That looked like enough for them. To 10k gold lead now for the uh, Legion side. Still only at the 5k gold lead, but Congords are going down. Polywell Ward is coming out. The Tempest minions and Zephyr's tank, and of course. <laughs> misses on Tempest, so he's not doing anything. And uh, Tempest may get split, and this looks like it's going to be a relatively quick combo kill. And of course, Legion has vision up here, uh, so they know what's happening. And there he goes, and it looks like Polly picked up the token. I guess uh, mostly because Zephyr's inventory was filled. Bubbles ultimate coming out and the silence, but that was not a great initiation as uh, responding with Zephyr ultimate. Nice time from him for uh, Tempest is going to go down here uh, thanks to the Pharaoh ultimate and good mummy walls. So they took um, Bubbles and Tempest, and now Pharaoh getting chased through the woods by Zephyr, and she's going to get trapped, and that's going to be the end of him. But Flint is being allowed to turn off here, except for the blink from uh, Polywalk Priest, and there goes Magnus, and Flint's going to pick, and they're going to get a kill on Poly, but he's going to get the token, of course. So right now it looks like a 1 for 3 in favor of the Legion team. Volleyball just used a token, but hey, why not? <laughs> aggressive, aggressive blink coming in there on Polly, and that's uh, not going to kill him. He's just going to live. Storm spreading himself, no point in that really, but they're going to be able to push his tower now. And Zephyr may not want him tanking this. Now they're choosing not to push Tower Black off as the um, token has already been used. So that's good for the Hellborn side, but they didn't choose to push it. I think they probably could do a little more damage than they ended up doing. And there, there were respawns coming out from Hellborn, I suppose, so... Uh, there's no reason, really, for Legion to press your luck at this point. Losing one or two heroes there without taking anybody was a very real possibility. Looks like there's going to be some jump. Attempt to jump around Zephyr? No. Just too far away. So Zephyr's going to get out. Now to 540 gold per minute. Still hasn't upgraded his boots. Um, you know, Sabu's going to go on the Zephyr, or Zephyr and Serrano last game, and it's possible they're going to go for the exact same build, getting the um, TP boots. Because usually you'll see uh, upgraded boots much, much earlier than this. Uh, by way of comparison, the only other heroes that have not upgraded their boots are Tempest and Pharaoh. Um, so... Zephyr, you would think, needs a little bit more ability, mobility. Meanwhile, Keep of the Forest getting taken out there, uh, thanks to probably the wards and the tongue tide. Attempting to jungle his own jungle, and that's not even safe anymore because there are a plethora of wards coming out here from, uh, I would assume, Toronto and M4. Yeah, lane ward over here, some wards up there in the jungle. So Legion is able to take this jungle form away from the Hellborn side, and that's a problem because they've already got a 14k gold lead and a 10k experience lead, and they're about to push their last outer tower right here. Of course, Zephyr just destroying waves with the Cyclones and the Mock. Very effective pusher. And they're going to defend this bottom tower here. Excellent stun on Flint, preventing his port, and that's going to screw him. He's absolutely dead right now. Five kills done! Very, very good stun from Nymph. And then taking the carry out, and that's the fourth death for, for Flint. And he's managed to get a 294 gold per minute, which is a pretty solid farm. But nobody else on this team is really doing much of anything. Uh, Keeper's got 307, but uh, Magma's on Isaac shooting on Magma's only at 85, 107 on beat is. And we've got Hex coming out here on Magmus from Polywog. Shiver giving him plenty of vision. There's going to be some group up, and M4 cannot see the invisible Magnus. Nice push showed him over, and he's going to land a stun on Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's going to be in some serious trouble here. Just living! Nope, going to die to Tundra. Excellent Pharaoh ultimate coming out there, hitting Polywog, and M4 are going to take Polywog down. Uh, good invis coming out on Magnus, but excellent presence of mind to destroy the trees so we can't um, use them to stay alive. Bubbles there giving away his position and basically letting their team chase him. 
He does have the portal key to try to help himself get away, but they know where he is now, and there's the Gus coming out stopping the port, and he's gonna die. Yeah. So, Keeper was already free and clear. He didn't really need a distraction. That was an interesting decision coming out there from Bubbles to Shell Surf. He obviously wasn't going to kill anybody. But he basically told them, Hey guys, I'm over here because of where I lost the Shell Surf from. I must be here. Uh, Keeper minions coming out. Kind of a stupid play. That's going to be free farm for Zephyr. And now they might actually kill Keeper. There's the Gus coming out. There's not enough trees nearby. And there's the stuns coming out. Keeper go down, goes down instantly. They weren't going to defend that tower. And they just basically gave... Uh, the kill on Keeper or the uh, free minions, which are worth about 25 to 30 gold each, so that's not insignificant farm for five of them. It's about 150 gold. Speaking of which, Sibusko uh, and Zephyr up to 566, he's going to catch up Flint and Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh just screwed Flint, and Flint's going to die now, thanks to me. Uh, but if not, Pharaoh first. Thanks to an excellent nymph port there, coming out the tongue tied of a stun from Polly and Nymphora, respectively. Uh, that's a terrible trap from Vita's on Pharaoh, though. Just screwed Flint, made him stand right next to Zephyr's Cyclone with his mock. And other words coming out, Tempest minions on the tower, this tower is going to go down. Of course, only two heroes alive, minus some bubbles for the Hellborn team. And they're not going to be able to defend it. Keeper's up right now, and his ult's up in three seconds, so he may be able to do something, but this Rax is going down. More tree dogs coming out. Again, I don't see the point. You're not going to defend this with those. The second box is now going to go down. And they might swing top in order to finish that off as it's already pushed in. Or they could just decide to retreat, cut their losses, and, and go back. So 25k, 20k. Uh, Golden Experience, respectively, leads now for the Legion team, and they certainly have this game in hand. It's absolutely, if not one, very, very winnable. 586 gold per minute now on Zephyr, and we've dropped down to 284 on Keeper and 261 on Flint, so not looking super good here. This game would have to probably go about another 30 to 45 minutes for the Hellborn main to sort of come back, and I just don't see the Legion allowing that to happen. They're already being super aggressive here in the jungle, like just camping their woods, making sure they can't get enemy farm. If they try to come in, they're going to get killed. Of course, aggressive wards coming out here from Toronto, right at the entrance, just make sure they don't. And there's jumps coming out, and the Hex and the uh, ultimate on Flint. Miss Pharaoh ultimate thanks to an excellent storm spirit usage from Polywalk. Completely useless for ult, probably to catch bubbles, but against the high mobility. And excellent keeper ultimate coming, or, uh, Tempest ultimate coming out. It's gonna kill both Tor uh, Vita's and Polarock, Flint and uh, Pharaoh. And there's a CC vote coming out. That's probably gonna get past before Keeper dies. Nope. Probably a lot of words coming out. And there goes Magnus. That's almost genocide. Bubbles the only one living there, although he's all the way back here, and that can change very quickly as there's a take cover, but he can't hex out and get out of time. There's the hex coming out for Polywog, tongue tied in a second, and there it is. There's the GG well played, and he actually Polarock DC before the GG vote came out, but that's the GG right there. So very well played on the lead inside. They knew they had a timer, and they stuck to it. 28 minute victory, absolutely dominating fashion. 609 gold per minute on Zephyr, 391 on Polywog, and up to 307 on Tundra, who, uh, despite the, the horrible form in the beginning, the managed to uh, pull it out at the end. Um, really, really not much that the yeah, Hellborn team was able to do. Obviously, commanding leads in both gold and experience, as well as hero kills. Um, and not great play from Korok on Flint, really didn't give himself the ability to get out of places, only went 1-6-3, but really wor worst play in it. It's too bad to say this because Beat is, is a great player, and same can be said for Semiju. 2-8-3 uh, on Beat is, and 0-6-5 on Isaac Juton, and that really, really didn't hurt, help. Both of them level 10, really had no farm, no ability to do anything, but they were still putting themselves in combat, of course, with Pharaoh's ultimate and Magnus' stun. So, that's the game. Very well played by Legion, and again, I'm not going to spoil the first game if you haven't seen it yet, but uh, let's go on to game 3 and see what happens.